All right, well, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Gordon Patterson. I chair the iCollections initiative. iCollections is one of a number of the scientific initiatives where the museum has decided that in order to address some of the major problems that we see in terms of making data available, it's decided to put its money where its mouth is. The project itself is to look at basically and digitize all the, UK, the British and Irish Lepidoptera. This is a collection of about half a million specimens, 5,000 5, drawers. Basically, we're going to image every specimen, take the data that's on the labels, database it, put that data into our KE database, and make it available. Effectively, iCollections is a pilot project. Now, the reason for doing this and doing the Irish and UK Lepidoptera is basically we needed a large data set. We needed something that was going to make a splash. We needed something that was going to actually test how we were going to build a pipeline for mass digitization. Now, we could have gone ahead and done it on small data sets, but frankly, we have 20, 20 million specimens to do in five years. This was an opportunity for us to really try and crack the system. The other reason for doing it is that in terms of our digitization of collections, entomology had fewer specimen level records than any other area. And we felt that this is one way of trying to address that and to look at the problems that were likely to occur. We also wanted a coherent data set, one that had relevance in a wider context. Basically, we needed to have people who were going to use it, people who were going to find it interesting, not just from the point of view of the taxonomists and the collection management staff, but also for people who were trying to address wider societal questions. Effectively, also, you, you, the butterflies are one of those charismatic groups. There's lots of data out there that would supplement what we've already got. So we could use our data with other people's data, with other kinds of data sets, to start to look at how the collections could be used to address macroecology problems. Also, this is a collections management project. It's a collections management initiative. And so part of this is to actually look at our collections and look at what have we got, how much have we got in a particular genus or species, where are the gaps, where are the gaps geographically. I think further down the line, when we show how we've managed to do this, we will perhaps be able to form global alliances. Because as Ian Owens has pointed out, one of the things about microlabs is that they are very tractable. They're very charismatic. Lots of people could be brought together to form larger projects when we could actually model the whole of the, the global species list of uh, butterflies, for example. OK, so we're building our pipeline. Effectively, the specimens have to be prepared. Each of those specimens has a label. The labels have to be taken off. I'll show you this in, in the slides coming in. They have to be then individually photographed. So they have to be put into an individual tray. Those are then imaged using a digital SLR. The images are then stored in a special database. We're actually rehousing at this point, so we're taking advantage of the fact that we're going to look at all of the collections to pull them up, up to a particular to a high standard. And we've managed to uh, leverage some extra funding to do that so we can get up-to-date drawers and up-to-date storage. Importantly, all the information is data-based, so the labels, all the information on the, on the labels are transcribed onto this database, which will then be georeferenced and ultimately then put up to and joined onto our KE system, which will then be made available to the outside world. This is how the collections work. You can see there are rows and rows of butterflies. The problem for us in looking at Lepidoptera is that in this particular instance, all the labels are on the underside of the, the butterfly. You have to actually take the specimen off, take the labels off the pen, and re, re, rearrange them. So, to do that, you have to have a very good, skilled group of people to do the digitization. You cannot just have people wandering in off the streets. You need to have people who are able to handle the specimens in a way that's not going to create damage. We set these people up into teams. This is, this is our digitization area. 
one of the things that we do is we work in teams of two. Important point for mass digitization, it's not just about the infrastructure, it's about where you're going to put these people. The more people you have, the more space you have to have. It's not a question of just fitting them in around your ordinary workers. That doesn't work. And the number of tensions that happen within the organization between this is a visitor space and this is a digitization space is one of the things that, as an organization, we have had to deal with. So I mentioned we take the specimens out of their drawers. Each one is put into a special box with, pl with a um, it plus the result back. The labels are arranged. Barcode is given or a data code is given to each one and they're imaged. This is a typical imaging station. We try to get the light right. You can see on the left hand side the specimens are taken out of the boxes after they've been imaged and put back into a new shelf. So what we get first is this is the kind of images we get. This is a, a bespoke um, data capture system. We've redone it so that we just look at the labels and capture the information on the labels, make it easy and simple. You can see that one of the biggest problems that people have is trying to interpret what's on the label. How are we doing? OK. At the moment, we've got about 63,000 specimens. You can see that we've got a long way to fill up. If those of you who want to contribute, please do. We're, we're always open for more funding, more, more people. Interestingly enough, we've got about 2% error rate. 2% doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've got half a million specimens, that's a lot. So we're working on that. Basically, uh, just a quick summary. We have six people digitizing between four and six. We reckon it's taking about 163 specimens per day per person. That roughly works out about three minutes for the whole operation. Now that's quite a short time. But if we're going to do it in three years, which is the target, between three and four years, that's, it becomes a production line. Henry Ford would have been proud of us. Finish off. What we're going to do next, establish a consistent taxonomy. One of the problems is we've got lots and lots of names. We do not want to clutter the KE system up with new names. We're creating duplicates, so we're going to sort that out before we migrate. Georeferencing. Not a trivial task when you have things like it was found in Devon or it was found in the North Downs. The KE interface itself is one of the things we're looking at so that KE, instead of having to build an intermediate bespoke system, we can actually do it straight into KE. That won't happen with our project, but we are trying to build it for other projects that come after us. And fundamentally, lots and lots more digitizing. This is a team effort. This project would not have got off the ground if it wasn't for the fact that everybody who's involved in this has really bought into it. Everybody from the ICT, from PEG, from the curation teams, we have made this work because the numerous little projects that come up have been solved as we've gone along. And it's been one of the great things about this project, as far as I'm concerned, is that we have all seen what we want to do, and we have all put an awful lot of effort into doing this, often unasked, but it's made it work, and it has been a real team effort, and it's due to the team that we're at where we are at the moment. Thanks. Gordon, tremendous. Thanks very much. Can I, can I just check whether there's any questions? Um, okay, yeah, please. Just one, Gordon. The error rate, what's causing that? So is that just pictures being misassociated with the wrong labels? or what, what was uh, that? There's a lot of, there's some of the, there is some thing to do with mismatches in the database, misreads of the, data, the barcodes within the system. So there are errors coming in with that. There are transcription errors as well, but not that many. So it's, it's, it's low, but it needs to be lower. We've got a we've got a question uh, from online again from Cabbage Leak. Georeferencing is a very slow process. Do you have any strategies to make it more efficient? Yes. Um, the fact is that most of the butterflies are recorded from particular localities. Collectors tended to go back to the same localities. 
So instead of having to geo-reference the whole of the UK, in fact, we have probably a subset. And we are basically creating that master list of localities, which will then be geo-referenced. Um, yes, thanks, Gordon. Uh, definitely, definitely the right group to do this with, and I'm very excited to see it. I was just wondering, are you aware of the, uh, the project that went on for over a few months at the Australian National Insect Collection with their Lepidopter, where they actually chose, well, it was, it was the barcode of Life database yeah. doing it, so they barcoded at the same time. Uh, did you think of doing something similar? Because there could be a whole s extra suite of questions that could be addressed. Even if you didn't actually do the sequencing yet, you just took the <sighs> material. Yes, we did think about this, but to be brutally honest, the priority for us was to, to actually get the, this done in a reasonable length of time. Adding the barcoding genetic aspect to it would have significantly slowed us down. And we feel that by making the data available, then it's, it's up to other people to come in and do it. Um, I can see the, you know, you can argue the merits and demerits one way or the other, but for us, making the content available was the critical thing. And, and the audiences I'm looking at are the other taxonomists, macroecologists, conservationists, and the general public. And I thought that was a wider audience than the molecular side at this particular juncture. OK, we've got one more at the back. Um, just curious. Uh, um, the NHM is listed on Notes from Nature, um, but not, there, that's a um, crowdsourcing of exactly this kind of information. And uh, they've got, um, I think, over 300,000, something like that, uh, transcriptions already done by 3,000 volunteers. Is there any reason why the, um, that's, the NHM is only in committed for the ornithological collections, and even that, I believe, hasn't started yet. No. Um, I was wondering if the LEP project would potentially be benefit from that, and you could actually bump up the numbers by hundreds of thousands quite quickly by crowdsourcing. It's, it's, yeah, it's something that we have actually look, looked at and we are looking at. Um, the answer to that at the moment is that we're, we are getting pretty fast at this. Um, we reckon that, I did some sums on the way in this morning, and I reckon that we will have all the butterflies done within a year and a half, top, and we'll have everything done, depending on the, the number of, of uh, uh, people we've got doing this, anything to about three and a half years. At the moment, we're not sure what the advantage would be to go, go to crowdsourcing, because given that we have got this facility, although the digital actual imaging doesn't take any length of time at all, um, we would then be reliant on the, the crowdsourcing catching up. And we're still weighing the pros and cons. There are very interesting crowdsourcing applications that we could do with this, yes. But we're just not quite sure whether the cost benefit is, is worth it at the moment. That's great. Thanks, Gordon. Um, Lance,